Here at BMC, we're always looking to bring new ideas and innovations to make our jobs better, and in that same effort to improve our workplace. We want to get rid of some things too. No, not the stale coffee. Mmm. Oh, and the cubicle karaoke. We got rid of that last year. I'm talking about these three things that are all too common. Strains, sprains, and stains. Honestly, as far as stains go, you'll have to handle that one yourself. Maybe eat more carefully or wear a bib or something. Oh, cute. But I'm here to help you with preventing strains and sprains. In fact, sprains and strains are the number one leading injuries at BMC. So I'm going to give you the knowledge and tools to reduce them so we can all go home healthy. To do this, we're going to use ergonomics. Ergonomics has nothing to do with my firm abs, but thank you for thinking of that. It's the science of designing workspaces to the capabilities and limitations of the human body. There are different types of ergonomics, but let's start with my favorite, vehicle ergonomics. Drivers should always use proper body mechanics and posture, and always remember the three points contact when entering or exiting a vehicle. Never hop, jump, skip, or belly flop or slide off of a vehicle. That's three points of contact, whether it's a delivery truck, pickup truck, Moffitt, or forklift. Whoa, 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 TJ. Three points of contact, buddy. Right. And then foot down. Awesome, man. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's go over warehouse, yard, and field ergonomics. There's a lot to cover here, but it's all very important, so stay with me. Proper tool use, sure, tools are the coolest part of the job, and you know how to operate them, but are you using yours correctly? This goes for powered and non-powered tools. If you're operating a nail gun, remember, that's like 15 pounds you're carrying around. Don't hold it when you don't need to. I know you're fond of it, but put it down when it's not in use. And, thank you, if you're swinging a hammer, don't choke up. Let the hammer do the work for you. Personally, I've always found that whistling while you work helps. Also, pay attention to your hand placement. It's important that the center of gravity be aligned with the center of the gripping hand. In other words, a tool should feel easy to hold either in an upright position or in the position it will be used. Treat a tool right, and it will treat you right. Whether you're typing on a keyboard at home or using a drill like Gino here, many of us perform tasks that exert force, and we do it repeatedly. This can injure muscles, joints, and tendons, so don't overdo it. Take breaks when you're doing these tasks. Just as important as using tools properly is proper material handling. For this, remember the power zone. Yes, it's as exciting as it sounds. The power zone is the area between your shoulders and your knees. That's where your muscles work most effectively and efficiently. When lifting, keep things close to the chest and keep them between mid-thigh and mid-chest. This helps your arms and back lift most effectively with the least amount of effort. To achieve this, place materials in the best placement for lifting. Pick things up between shoulder and knee level and eliminate awkward postures, which means don't reach above your shoulders and don't lift from below the knees. Never reach around parts or products and avoid extended reaches such as across tables. Besides, you want to get slapped by your mama? She taught you better than that. Mom! Hey folks, I'm here with Michelle who works at BMC and she's going to show us the proper manual lifting technique. You ready to go? I am. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this box is our object. First thing to remember is to move in close to the object. All right, perfect. Now you want to get your uh, feet wide, shoulder width apart, one foot slightly in front of the other. Now, bend down with your knees, chest up, and buttocks out. <laughs> really? She's laughing because I said buttocks, aren't you? Oh, goodness. All right, so let's worry about the hands. Put that on opposite corners of the box. Now, pull the box into you. Test the weight, make sure it's not too heavy. When we know it's not too heavy, I want you to push up through your heels, keep your spine straight, and head up. Perfect. Now, when you go to move the object, pivot with your feet. Don't twist or turn like this. Go for it, Michelle. Ha <laughs> ha! She's a pro! For molding, be sure to stand up the molding and lay it on your shoulder in the middle. Be sure to use shoulder pads or other protective devices correctly. For a door, lean it back in the middle, balance it on your arm, walk over to your rack, stand it on its edge, and then stand it up. When team lifts are necessary, remember to use proper ergonomics. Just because you have help doesn't mean you don't need to be careful. This isn't like one of those high school group projects where one person does all the work. That was me. No, no, no. When, using, when doing team lifts, this is how it should be done. 
Use 6S to keep a clean workspace. Navigating around material causes unnecessary twisting and turning. Evaluate the travel path and clear objects out of the way. Get help for heavy or bulky or multiple objects. Identify a lift lead, sometimes it requires two of them. The lift lead communicates action and direction and should be the eyes for the person moving backwards. Even when you're doing everything right, like Curtis back here, your muscles can still get fatigued. I got a great physique, but I still get fatigued. And it can happen in just 10 seconds. So give your muscles plenty of time to recover to avoid injury. And you can also rotate tasks that utilize different muscle groups. If you need to carry something more than 10 steps, look for a way to push it. Can you use a cart? Can you get some help? Here is an example of a mechanical device that can help you. BMC has invented similar styles across the country. Proper handholds are also important. Use the proper handholds and you'll feel like you got some kind of superpower. Use a mass or power grip because they're the most powerful and require the least muscle effort. And avoid a pinch grip or a wide grasp. There are other things to consider too. Ensure your material is balanced, don't exceed weight limits, know when to get help or use mechanical assistance, and plan for the terrain. Reduce challenges by mapping out your travel path and keeping your eyes on the path. Mechanical assist devices can make tasks easier, but remember, you always need to follow proper ergonomics. Whether you're using a uh, forklift, floor jack, dolly, or cart, here's old Rob using a door dolly, not Dolly Parton, silly. Always push bars and handles in the power zone. Way to go, Rob! He's pushing in the power zone! The final ergonomics is office ergonomics. If you sit at a desk all day, use proper posture when sitting in your chair. You not only feel better, you look better. And take many stretch breaks throughout the day to minimize being in the same position all day. Proper workstation setup is important for reducing musculoskeletal problems with the neck, shoulders, back, wrist, as well as eye strain. Avoid contact stress with desk edges and make your workstation and office chair fit you. When seated, make sure your thighs are parallel to the ground and feet are supported. Lumbar support is in the small curve of the lower back. The seat supports your legs without touching the back of your knees. And armrests are just below your elbows when the arms are hanging loosely at your side. Then make sure your chair is adjusted to your desktop. Raise the chair height so that when seated and working and typing, your arms hang loosely from the shoulder and your elbows form a 90 degree angle with a straight line through the wrist to the keyboard. Also, adjust your monitor directly in front of you approximately an arm's length away so that the first line of lettering is at the same height as your eyes. If you wear bifocal glasses, you'll need a little lower. All these things should improve how you feel overall. And they might even improve your video game high scores. That's when you're at home, of course. To avoid workstation injuries, be careful not to get struck by items and not to get caught in or between them. You can reduce slipping, tripping, and falling by not stacking materials or putting your trash can on things and not putting things under your desk where your feet are supposed to go. You can also avoid injuries by not throwing objects at coworkers even if they deserve it. And remember, even in an office environment, proper lifting is important. This is true for small loads as well. From boxes of copy paper to large mail packages, avoid injury by using the same lifting techniques mentioned earlier. Wow, covering all that made me hungry. Let's try to remember these tips and let's work to prevent strains and sprains here at BMC. I'll work on preventing that too.